Okay, let's go ahead and get into this, shall we? Also, hello, Caden, and thank you so much for the tier 2 sub. I believe you are my first... I believe you're actually my first two, uh, tier 2 sub, if I'm not mistaken. So, thank you for that. It's much appreciated. So, let's get into this. So, I've been... Um, it's one thing that, that sometimes I forget that while I do have lore already on the elves and the uh, like the humans and the dwarves because those are you know always considered major races sometimes I always forget <clears throat> that sometimes players don't like playing those uh, in fact one of my players is an Azamar uh, I have no idea what I'm going to be doing with those, to be fair. They may actually just be strictly by the book. Uh, but when it comes to things like the Tieflings and the Dragonborn, I like them being a little different. You know, instead of being by the book, because in, in my world, things like Tiamat does not exist. So, things have to be done a little differently, uh, for the most part. Um, so I do have the, the Dragonborn stuff up, because I was using it as a, you know, of course, the, the template. And so we're gonna get in here. So I've already kind of set up what I wanted to do. <clears throat> there is the, the Black Meteor, uh, which is, and hopefully the music isn't too loud, or too quiet, that is, um, I still have a lot of hard time balancing game or audio when it comes to like YouTube stuff. Um, but I already kind of know getting back on track. I know the gist of what I want, but I don't know fully how to put it into text. Right? You know, when it's up here, it's real easy, but trying to put it down on paper can be a lot harder. So I at least at minimum have a black meteor, a uh, where when it crashes down, uh, not only is it uh, a bit of an omen, uh, but every <clears throat> child that is um, in the womb at the current moment it hits, they are destined to come out as a tiefling. So they're like the children of of Omen or the the, the children of the, the meteor kind of thing. Not that everyone even knows, because the meteor crash crash lands on the edge of the continent in the desert, where at the current moment no one actually lives. And that's kinda where I'm at, to be fair. I just need to put it down on paper and link it to um, an age, which will probably be the second age, because the first age is is basically prehistoric. The um, I still haven't given that one a name. the The second age is the age of myth, or the age of myths. Hmm. But that's why I'm I'm doing this, right? Because a lot of times I will I'll write something up. And then I want to show someone it so they can look it over. And sometimes it might, it just might be a little easier if I do that. If there's someone actually watching over my shoulder instead of after the fact kind of thing. So we'll see how it goes. I do have it set in the, in the tags about backseating. If someone finds something a little too ridiculous, um, of course, you know, it is D&D. Magic does exist, of course. But if things don't add up in a way, it, uh, I have no problem with someone running through with, like, how it should be. Now it makes a little bit more sense. So let's go ahead and get into it. I'm probably not going to do the flavor text because right I hit right here I have you know the origin of the dragonborn race can be race or can be traced back to the end of the age of dragons I'm not sure what I want to do with that one just yet that's kind of like the the, uh, the preface the preface 
but I can at least do this, which is... And hopefully my key my keystrokes aren't too loud. And I should warn you, you're gonna see a lot of typos. Not only do I type relatively quickly at times, I'm also a lot of times thinking ahead. And I don't know what's wrong with this keyboard at this point. It is it has a uh, ghost clicks at this point, or ghost, or has ghosting to where if I tap the key once, sometimes it will hit it twice. Yeah, and speaking of that, there it was, the during the age of <clears throat> myth. And no, I am definitely not an English major at all. Uh, I am a designer at heart. So uh, I'm go I I will mess up the English English language pretty pretty horribly. I will butch it terribly. Just like when I speak. It, it matches, at least. I also, if I'm not mistaken... I do... Yes, I do. There we go. Should probably throw this up on my monitor that isn't uh, looking over Streamlabs. Here we go. <clears throat> Thank God for autocorrect, and a lot of times it works. I will try my best to keep my mouse out of the way. Um, I should probably un... or have Streamlabs not pick it up, but, you know, oh well. Let's see... Let's change large to massive, I think. Ooh-wee. Crash landed into the. Now, I, if I'm not mistaken, I believe I've already named this desert. Give me just one second to look up my world anvil because I'm going. So, a lot of people recommend the use of things like world anvil to do all your lore stuff. But I find it a, a larger pain in the ass to deal with World Anvil <clears throat> and its weird quirks than it is just to, just to do this in a Google document or in, a, in, in Google Drive. It's so much easier. And they... they they lock things behind paywalls that I do not believe need to be behind a paywall uh, when they're some of the most basic things imaginable. So I believe that I call it the desert. Come on, open the article. Edit article. Thank you, add, go away. We have... Okay. <clears throat> Fragments. Yes, I call it. Desert. <clears throat> uh, God, I absolutely hate that keystroke thing. I don't. I don't. I really do not want to pay for. Uh, another, you know, hundred some odd dollar keyboard at this point. I'm just gonna have to live with the keystrokes because they don't they don't affect me when I'm I'm gaming at all. Uh, it's just when I'm trying to type stuff up. It's really annoying. Uh into the desert.
<clears throat> Let's see here. Okay. <clears throat> so there's that. Crash lands into the southern tip of the continent. Infinite desert. And then... Um, so this is going to be a bit more lore on the meteor first and foremost. Which then I don't know if it, it should probably have its separate uh, event in the in the history tab that goes a little bit more into it. But for now, this is just the the synopsis. Uh, shattered. Unless maybe I'm doing this completely wrong. I don't I don't really know how to put things into um, how do I <clears throat> how the best to format stuff. You know, it's not really my my forte. I'm not. I'm not a professional writer. I haven't, you know, played D and D for you know ten plus years, and you know this world is you know twenty years in the making. And a lot of times, normally, I just play things by the book as they are. You know, just what it says in the player's handbook, whatever. <laughs> a lot of times, players don't ask, and if they do. And a lot of times I'll be like, well, how do you feel about it? I, I picked that up from some video long ago, but I've learned that a lot of players don't, don't do that. <laughs> you know, they already don't, uh, they already have enough trouble choosing a predetermined background from the player's handbook. Let alone actually thinking more in depth of their actual uh, characters, uh race and whatnot shattered Okay, oops. Yep, and sometimes I will very much double type a word if I'm not... If I am distracted. This is why it takes me forever to... <laughs> forever to uh, get stuff out. I am surprised I have enough of a homebrew world to um, actually run a campaign. With the amount of, of time it takes me to type stuff up. pop in chat but I'm gonna go drift in unconsciousness for a bit I feel that you already know who it is welcome welcome thank you for stopping by both of you yeah I don't we probably don't need three paragraphs here I can all of course I can always come back and add more so I'm not too worried about it
you know, maybe thinking about it, there probably does need to be a second paragraph here to to link back to or to link these two together. Mm. Probably only two paragraphs here. That sounds a little, a little bit more right to me. <laughs> nice cock, bro. Yes. Again, this is the the problem of in here to on here. <laughs> uh, what am I trying to do here? My typing. Maybe it was a bad idea to do this with how horrible my typing is. Thank God for autocorrect. happening today nothing much I am just doing a little bit of uh, world building for my my campaign uh, normally some of this stuff would already be done um, even though I have an ongoing campaign but thankfully I have I have no tiefling players and no one wanted to be one um, so it gave me a little bit more time to work on this because I have lore for the major races done you know, the human, the elves, and the dwarves. But I hadn't... Right? But... We have an Azamar. Because of course we have an Azamar. <laughs> Every campaign... Instead of a tiefling... We have to have an Azamar. I don't know what the appeal is with them at this point. <laughs> uh, and for now, I, I don't even know what I want to do with them. Uh, they may just be played by the book at this point because I, I've never been a big fan of, of the, of the blue boys. All right, so many cultures across, Raylock. It's all the event different. Definitely some, ooh, some. Strokes. Some saw, saw it as a. So of course this is during the the second era of my world. Fanboy of bulls. Uh, I've always imagined Azamar as humans with a little extra, not like a proper race with their own society and culture. That, that's true. That's probably how how I will, um, that's probably how I'll run it. They're just seen as, you know, alabaster, pale AF humans with, uh, with everyone's favorite dark vision. <laughs> Some saw it as a, as an omen. Oh, others. It as the culture. Hmm. Well, I guess technically, I feel like something like the dwarves would probably see it as a um, blessing. Wouldn't be the correct word. 
but they would see it as an opportunity for unique resources, perhaps? Because in my world, the dwarves are a mixture of like dwarf fortress dwarves and warhammer dwarves. So they are very industrial and um, very warfaring, of course. And I feel like, I mean, they're, they're the only race that directly has access to gunpowder. So I feel like they probably would. Now at the time, at this time, the desert is actually unpopulated. Soon enough, I believe in either at the very end of this age, or at the start of the next age. Uh, I think in my homebrew setting, I make the Duergar the dominant dwarven clan. Yeah, I haven't I haven't decided what I want to do with the Duergar yet. Um, right now, my dwarves themselves are split off into seven clans, I believe, two of which have fallen. Or at least their mountain homes have fallen. So perhaps one of them is is um would be the Duagar. <laughs> oh my chat. Saw it as as an opportunity. It's such a such a strange way to word that, but I can I can work on it a little bit. I don't know how long this stream is gonna go, because right now I mean we have, I mean at least this much work to do on the tieflings. But on top of that, I mean all of this, some of this I can thankfully just transfer from what I already have. But there is definitely some stuff in here that needs to be done, like the... Probably the Atlas? Yeah. Yeah, like this kind of stuff. And whatnot. But we'll we'll get to it eventually. I'm probably not- I'm of course not gonna stream. Do you take chat inspiration? Of course. Please. <laughs> I- I love... Uh, I love world building even with my own players. Um, for instance, my my fiance um, basically built up one of the dwarf clans uh, when she decided to have a noble background. Probably not. Never mind. Oh no, I I am of the I am definitely someone that takes inspiration. Again, it's because I'm not a I'm not a professional writer. on at the moment he mentioned tieflings so it, it's basically just getting out on on paper which this is the problem in my head right so right now we're at a because we have the history so right here is probably is is the actual tieflings right i need to link the black meteor event to why for that entire year, <clears throat> any any child that was in a womb of any any race, including you know elves, dwarves, and humans, why that for that year, tieflings popped out, you know, as if they're the the instead, so they're no longer potentially children of. You know, by the book, the D 
demon children, basically. I, I know that's not exactly it. Just a random question, but does your homebrew have a pantheon? Monotheistic, or the di deities not really regarded much? Uh, would the Black Meteor have infernal influences? Cursed due to the Meteor. That's that's what I'm going for, is the curse by the Meteor. I'm not sure I could do the, the infernal influence of the Black Meteor. Uh, and to answer your question, <clears throat> each faction, or each race, has its own own gods. The, the elves worship a mother tree, or one side, one faction, because the, they are split between two. The elves worship a mother tree, while the other faction wor worships a, like, a void dragon. The dwarves, they have... You know, God of the Forge, God of... God of the Hammer, just your... Just kind of that. And then the, the humans, they don't have a religion. They worship the church itself. Uh, their church is like, holy... This is a holy symbol. This is a holy symbol. Uh, we're gonna add this to our church. You know, they worship, They don't worship Lathander and Kador, but they use their holy symbols kind of thing. But, uh, let's see. So, cursed through the meteor, yeah. So, yes, they are... These children are cursed by the meteor. That's is definitely what I'm going for. Let's see. What if the meteor was a dormant elemental with origins to one of the infernal planes realms? This hell elemental was set on course by a powerful archdevil who has plans for tieflings born in this setting. This is true, because what I'm also building up to is in this one mind, two body, or excuse me, one body, two minds, <laughs> uh, they are... They basically have a fragment that the the Black Meteor itself, of course, is alive with an energy. Of course, I think we may have our, our answer to this. And that they basically have in the back of their head a... Of course, this is stolen or influenced by uh, Black Desert Online, one of my top... Uh, top... MMOs that I play, uh, they are basically have a black spirit within them. Uh, it's almost like the 115 element. Um, have you read The Color Out of Space? I'm thinking something similar. I have not, but I can definitely take a look at that. kind of mentioning that because another thing is this meteor is also setting into effect a uh, what are called black stones which are this originally it was thought of as a, a bit of like a super coal so it could it, it could heat hotter than everything else but it was, of course, discovered uh, leading up to, and this is ages past, almost to modern time, the, that they have latent magic in them, uh, which really sets in motion the, um, uh, a lot of things. Exactly, there we go. Yeah, so that, that does make a lot more sense with the inf Infernal Origins. This is why I feel like I should have maybe worked on the Gone for the History 
and of course set up the ages and had that event in there first before working on tieflings but see i work a lot of times i work backwards right because i just get spur of the moment kind of ideas Uh, like what happens to the tech that is powered by super coal what happens to the people exactly so there is actually a town uh, which my players have not gotten to and i'm not sure if they ever will because they're hell-bent on going to the capital uh that where they do mine this bl these black stones and the town itself has been cursed where the miners are slowly, and I do mean slowly, being petrified. All of a sudden, black lung. Exactly. They are slowly being petrified. And as far as in the current lore, there's no cure to it. It's only being staved off. And... Uh, of course, these are, because now we know that it's more than just super cold. Uh, the dwarves are using it to, uh, they're still using it in kind of a super cold method, but they're also using it to enhance their gunpowder. Because they are, they're not, right now they're dealing with a lot of problems, but they do want to be the major power. And they think they can do it when they have the equivalent of artillery, right? They're not going to be using catapults. They're going to be using, like, howitzers, like, like with Warhammer, right? They love their explosives. Um, I should, maybe I should open up a document. Give me a second to... Let me... yeah, here we go. I can... let me do this. Google Documents, Create and Share. Let's have an Ideas document. Uh, there are game mechanics tied to Infernal Weapons in the... Avernus book? Could take inspiration from that book. That is true. So let's have... let's have an Ideas thing. So this is where it's just kind of messy, so we have... So we have the... The Black me Meteor. Which leads into... Uh, we have the, the Super... Super Coal... <clears throat> Infernal... Influence... What else was in here? Ah, right, the, the black lung slash pet slow, and I know I spelled that wrong, slow petrification. Uh, let's see. Let's see, so selling it uh, it is like, it's basically a kind of an arms race kind of thing, so they, they will sell it to each other, but it's like, you know, it's, it's top dollar. Uh, essentially, infernal material used to make weapons or ammunition is treated as magical, and any humanoid killed by infernal weapons... Uh, had, or Infernal Weapon had their soul damned straight to hell. You can imagine why arch Archdevils would want war-hungry mortals to use their weapons. This is true. Infernal... Weapons. This is... See, this is, see, this right here is why I wanted to stream. I knew even though I don't, most of my audience doesn't watch my D&D &D streams because they've come from me playing things like Dead Cells and whatnot. But I knew that at some point there would at least be one person 
that it, that is just really good at this stuff <laughs> because I'm I'm not the best that's for sure so let's see what do we have powered by let's see. oh we do have the So we have that. Alright, uh, I think turn it out. Yeah, the dormant elemental. So we can we can have that. We have the, the black spirits. Uh tieflings could have a certain use mind. Or they could simply be a side effect. Imagine if the existence of tieflings was simply an afterthought in the grand scheme of things. That is true. They could have a natural, kind of like dragonborn, even though they're not dragons, they still like to hoard things. So tieflings are naturally drawn to... Uh, to you know, they're, even though no one wants to mine this stuff because they've seen the, the withering of the petrification disease, it's for some reason these tiefling don't have a problem with it. Yes, they're also being slowly uh, being taken over by the petrification disease too, but they don't seem to care. Exactly. I like that. So... Yes. Naturally... Naturally... Drawn to... Raw... Black stones. Which means that they're also probably going to be the main... Black market merchants too when it comes to that because you're on fire <laughs> yeah this this person is really good <laughs> i'm very glad you stopped by my stream it's much appreciated Oh, that's exactly what I'm going for. <laughs> My world is extremely bleak. I mean, we can uh, we can read the the uh, the Dragonborn lore. You know, they this is of itself. Of course, my fiance thinks it's uh, it's metal instead of bleak. But I am going for a like a gothic inspired gothic, even gothic horror inspired. Uh, campaign, so it is very dark. Uh, humor is very limited, kind of thing. So it's it's perfect uh, for my world. Uh, let's see. apologize it's it's you know it's springtime in texas and i have really bad allergies because <laughs> uh, in comparison to other races who might have had been handcrafted by their progenitors the tiefling could be seen as abandoned or forgotten by their creators that is true yeah i i like that yeah Let's see. <clears throat> Man, I hate this. I hate the spring. I'm glad it's not, you know, in the negatives like it was during winter. And I know it's going to be better than the, the hundred plus degrees in the summer. But man, do I hate pollen. Yeah, we had a, uh, a very hell of a winter. Uh, 
my my apartment um i talked about this quite a lot when it happened uh but of course my power was knocked offline for uh, four days and my tiny apartment before they turned it on it uh got down to below freezing in my own apartment uh, i had to um and even then my pipes were frozen up thankfully they didn't burst but I had to spend a lot of time uh, at like the warming centers and just eating, eating uh, whatever food they gave us. <clears throat> Those that bore children on the year of the meteor. It was, <clears throat> it was disastrous. Glad you made it out. Well, thank you so much. It was, it was, it was pretty bad. There's no such thing as seasons. I, I, I do like that too. Uh, a lot of people like to joke that Texas has no seasons. It's a myth where I live. I feel that. So many people say, believe Texas is the, is the same way. <laughs> that it's all just one, one temperature. Florida. Hmm. Yeah, I'm surprised you even know the word season over there. <laughs> Isn't it just rain? Either raining or not rain? I actually have to pull up. I I have never dealt with a tiefling player before, so I actually have to go and look. I know that they have horns. I know that they have the different skin colors. But that is... Oh, thank you for... Let's see... Large horns, curling, different horns, uh, thick, oh right, they have tails, canine teeth, eye colors are solid, full range of, of, uh, coloration, shades of red, <clears throat> right, dozen varieties as far yeah yeah I'm definitely I'm I'm not going to to stop the different varieties of course there there's no reason to I I like it when my when tieflings aren't all just red-skinned human devils <laughs> it's kind of nice when when someone wants to play as one that looks like a drain eye um, so I'm definitely not going to be, be stopping that. Um, I may actually, let's see. Ooh, words. These children. See, they... <clears throat> they wouldn't be born with horns directly uh, because, you know, horns, they grow. But they would have a tail at minimum. So that's 
Hello, hello, hello. Welcome to the stream, Glorious Zoat. Hopefully I said that correctly. It's children... Uh, no, these are, these are in fact just tieflings with a, um, with a, a new origin, um, because that's, that's kind of how I like it. I haven't done a, a homebrew race just yet, but I like having some of my more uncommon races, um, having unique origins. So instead of being... Basically, they're still of, they're still infernal, uh, is what we've gone with, but there's an event that caused them to happen instead of the, they just kind of pop out sometimes. Um, so that's what we're going for. Now, I do have it to where, now that the event has happened, because Blackstones and Blackstone Powder has in has intertwined in the world that now yes they do just kind of pop out from time to time instead of um, so it's not like these tieflings are the only tieflings and they ever only ever will be unless they breed with each other kind of thing tails and we get some of hellboy and that they can be filed away. Yeah, they probably will be, they probably will have the whole needing to, uh, you know, they're constantly growing and they have to be groomed kind of thing. Tails and head. Let's see, the shoulder and head thing. So the head, tails, and... So they're not going to have their teeth right off the bat, because they're still babies that don't have teeth. Unless maybe they do start. Maybe they are born with teeth. I don't know. Uh, they do have the the solid... Uh, so, quick idea, those that saw the meteor might wear these... Hmm. Yeah, that, that's true. I, w I would feel like the, the dwarves would probably be the most inclined to use it as jewelry. Um, and I feel... So, yeah, they could be definitely inner a lot more intertwined with the Blackstone stuff. They already are, because they're using it in their in their gunpowder, uh, with like their artillery stuff, um, and their... Because we've already mentioned, if we go to the ideas, that the original Dwarven Tieflings... I mean, I don't see why not. I The, the way they have it is where every race this year that it happened has given birth to to these tieflings. So they're humans, elves, dwarves. So yeah, there's gonna be some like squat tieflings. It's kind of funny. Um, and that yeah, and that would explain the spread as well. They're just kind of just gonna pop out. It's like now they're they're kind of all over the place. Because I originally thought that maybe they would go on to um, be the ones that created the the desert civilization that no longer exists anymore. Uh, but I've already kind of accidentally set in motion that it was a fallen human civilization. Uh, maybe that it was tiefling heavy.
Mm, if the black stone is a coal analogy, thank you so much for the the follow, uh, fanboy. Thank you so much. Uh, would the smog created by the burning of black stones have some harmful effects to the surrounding setting? I feel like they would. Um, hmm. Yeah, we'll we'll definitely get into that I feel like so I can I can add that in here <clears throat> burning stones is this Adrian von uh, are you talking about the the background music because I have I have no idea Oh, yes it is. Yes, you are correct. Hopefully I don't get struck. <laughs> uh, damn, I might just steal all of this for my setting too now that I think about it. You have done so much work for my setting. Uh, because you've really, you've really helped out uh, with this, so... I mean, it, it fits too. I, I like the idea of it. Because now I'm thinking. I got you thinking. Let's see. So, the children of the omen. Uh, these are the actual, the original tiefling. So, um, let's see. So the Ubergar clans would probably set up some kind of trade agreement with the Tiefling leadership near where the meteor crashed down at. Fair. Yeah, that that definitely works as well. Yeah, I'm definitely going to probably have... Now I'm going to have to think on the... Uh, the... The dark... The dark dwarves. Hmm... All of a sudden you have an alliance that's like two-thirds of the Axis powers or something like that. Fair point. is where I can just yoink from the actual player's handbook. <clears throat> See, they to... So I'm not familiar with D&D &D or anything. Is this still an official setting? No. This is an entirely homebrewed world of, of uh, Rollick or Raylock, depending on the actual... Depending on how I want to say it, and depending on... Uh, normally I just leave it up to accents. Is there still an Underdark or something? E yes. I, I, while it's not an official thing, I've still taken a lot of official stuff, so there is the Underdark. Um, for instance, my world is also heavily influenced by the Shadowfell. That's one of the main key components of it. Uh, which might be uh, slightly influenced from whatever the hell these black stones are. 
uh, because you can you can go back. I'm sure we're kind of at this point missing a lot of campaigns. Did the meteor perhaps strike hard enough to land somewhere in the Underdark? It could have. It did strike in a desert. So... Hmm. Yeah, that's a, that's a good point. I will, I'll have to keep that in mind as I, as I keep going. Uragar fighting against other un, under dark races could be the three cream. Yeah, that is definitely true. Desert region poisoned by hate and infernal industry. That is fair, <clears throat> and it might explain why the desert civilization no longer exists, and it might actually explain why, in the current timeline, the orcs who have taken over the area are having so many problems uh, because in my world the they were you know driven out you know they kind of lived everywhere for the most part but when the the world or the human empire unified uh, they had to be they were driven out driven south across the the mountains or through a mountain pass into the desert. Uh, with the sands have been stained with soot from burning black stone and the blood of conquered empires. Yeah. I mean, there's, there, there is six ages worth of, uh, worth of stuff that needs to be filled. So I wouldn't be surprised if the, if this, so the meteor happened in the second age if in the Third Age, which is the Age of Dragons, if there wasn't a dragon down there, they were... Uh, so is the meteor itself like a sacred site now? I would want to say they would they definitely would have built around it, like the, the massive lost city of Finnec. Or Finac <clears throat> is built on the the crash site. That's how I could I could see it now. Hmm. Yeah. a dwarven city, wouldn't it be typical to make a fortress inside the meteor? Hmm. I feel like, so the city could be, could be twofold, right? You have the top side, 
um, which was built by humans and tieflings. And then the underside, um, basically almost hanging underneath it, uh, where almost like the buildings are, you know, hanging upside down, would be the the Duergar section, almost. Um... <clears throat> Every so often, dwarves, uh, dwarves and or tieflings would find relics from the destroyed. There we go. Yeah. <laughs> because, uh, yeah, we really are. Oh, good God. I have to. Okay. So we have, we now have Finnac. <clears throat> the city city of let's just call it the city of blackstones for now <clears throat> and we have so we have uh, built on meteor crash not the crash shit <laughs> please no <laughs> crash site You have, um, let's see, the Alliance, Alliance between, ooh, Jesus. Like I, like I warned at the start of this, uh, I am, I am pretty bad. <laughs> Let's see, my NPC would be an Iron Dragon polymorphed into a despotic Duogar Warlock with a Mohawk. I love it. Alliance between... Surface... Dwelling... Humans... Tieflings... And the Duergar. Oh. <clears throat> Bolus the Ferris Iron Warlord. Yeah, I, I like this. Shit, I'm into this setting now. <laughs> well, it's a good thing I stream this setting every Saturday at 6 p.m. Central Standard Time. Greeting, what art thou crafting, my good sword? We are crafting what started out as world building the tieflings to completely redesigning what was going to just be a, a cursed meteor into an entire setting, basically. Uh, we have a, a meteor crashes in the second age of my campaign world. The teethlings. I'm sorry. <clears throat> the teethlings. Uh, with an F. I am, uh... I have, I have speech impediments, uh, problem, sadly. <laughs> At the black stone wastes. This is true. So we have the black meteor that crashes down in the second age. It is discovered, um, or thought of originally as super coal. Uh, which we're still deciding on, on what all goes on with the actual burning of it. But because it is of infernal influences, um, that explains the super coldness. And uh, mining it causes a almost like a black lung and a, a slow petrification. Uh, we have the infernal weapons. We have black spirits, which we'll be getting to eventually. Let's see, I'm a survivor of a brain hemorrhage, so I guess we are all broken in some ways. 
Yeah, uh, I am very sorry to hear that, too. Uh, also, the Avernus book has stat blocks for Infernal Weapon War Machines, if that's your jam. I will definitely have to take a look at that. Let me see. Let's see, so it is the... Yeah, I will, I will definitely have to take a look at this. Hmm. Cool beans. The little lawnmower. Let's see. Uh, did we have... What else did we have here? We had... Oh, yes. Um, so... Relics. Maybe treasured relics. The strawberry is my jam, actually. <laughs> uh, so, how much are you into D and D lore and stuff? So, I am. I have. I of course came from one of those families where D and D was of the devil. And it was forbidden for me to to really get into it. So I've only really been into D and D for about five years now. Uh, this world itself is basically, in a way, six years old. Uh, because I, when I knew I was moving out, um, I started to to read up on stuff. Um, but when it comes to lore, you know, I do listen to, to lore videos and I, I tweet things to my fitting. Uh, I am much more of a, a home brewer than anything else, to be honest. Um, my players have learned very, very well. Have you smoked the marijuana? No, I have not smoked the, the devil's lettuce. <laughs> not until it is legal in Texas. Uh, lore is great. I love lore of all kind. I really enjoy it, too. It's nice that there's so many different um, lore creators on, on YouTube uh, that sometimes have different... Uh, have uh, different uh, takes on the, on the lore. Texas-based. Oh, yes. I am very much from Texas. I, I have survived the, the hellish winter, and I have, I'm, I'm here stronger than ever. So we have that. Temps were fresh over there. Oh yeah, <laughs> we dropped down in, into the negatives, including my own apartment. Uh, so if this is also your jam, Iron Dragons have a burrowing speed, metal sense, several innate spells that could cast, as well as as a sleep gas breath weapon and a lightning cone breath weapon. Ooh, that sounds like fun. And you know, um, hmm. That's a good point. In the current timeline, the dragons are gone, or so people think, uh, because they were they were hunted out of ex extinction. Are we just spitballing ideas? Yeah, pretty much. Uh, we really are, um, because I I take all. I mean, it's 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 kind of nice if it kind of links back to the current topic of the the black meteor and stuff. But um, 
I don't mind spitballing ideas. I do have a little thing I can I can put here. So generally you take a canary with you to track iron dragons. If the canary stops singing, there must be an iron dragon nearby. And when you start feeling a little sleepy. Okay, so we have treasured relics from Meteor. We have, we have that. So while I work on this, uh, From random randomness comes inspiration, this is true. That's a great, a neat idea, kind of like uh, looting to natural poisonous gases. Now you bring a rock bard troop, and if they start playing Black Sabbath, there's an iron dragon around. Uh, I could also see that, since it... Yeah, hmm. I wonder... So I was going to have the the orcs in my world not be normally, you know, aggressive uh, because of the amount of issues they're having since they took over this cursed empire in the desert. I wonder if maybe since we're talking about an iron dragon if he would be willing to, or if one would be willing to, um, fake its way to be an orc, the orc chieftain, to continue the, uh, the mining of the, the black stones. The more often than not, do ideas than not ideas of other people given inspiration by me not entirely agreeing with them but taking a good point this is true and that's exactly what's going on here uh for me because i don't want to take things wholesale to be honest but i'm willing to to take little bits of it uh i don't world build but i complain a lot about a certain setting and try to figure out how to fix it in my head I mean, I, I feel that. <laughs> uh, and uh, that's another reason why I'm, I'm doing this. I want people to nitpick my stuff. Uh, because I know I have players that nibble at stuff. Because they don't want the, the DM hand-waving of it. You know, I had a... Um, one of my players before... Uh, we're all about how we do it better here right now. Thanks, Blizzard, for ruining franchise with a lot of potential. Which one was that one? For for Blizzard? Was this Warcraft? <laughs> wow. Yeah, I ended my my WoW sub um, in the last month. I just I got tired of the Shadowlands grind. Wow, was never good. Oh boy. Ended mine two years ago. See, I kept playing because of my fiance, but now she's playing Final Fantasy XIV, and uh, I don't want to pay a monthly sub at this point. I'm sick and tired of, of paying monthly for shit. Thank you so much for the follow, Session Zero. Name is very apt. Howdy, streamer and chat. Howdy, howdy. I do enjoy my howdies. Where is my howdy emote? There it is. There's my howdy emote. 
how do how do uh let's see i've come close to adapting most of wow for my tabletop rpg setting fair enough yeehaw uh, i own session zero games i make tabletop rpg stuff for a living well, I'm honored that you've stopped by my, my little channel. Thank you so much. Wait a second. Your name sounds familiar. Do you... Do you have a Twitter? Have you retweeted one of my... One of my D&D tweets before? Or is that a different tabletop RPG... Thing? Hmm. I'm not too sure, but welcome to the stream. I love checking out D&D streams, and I'm not sure sometimes that's fair. That's very understandable. Alright, well, welcome, welcome. We're just kind of, um, what started out as a way to, uh, for me, just kind of writing down my thoughts on my, on my tieflings, since I want them to be, to be different, um, from the standard Feyrun room um, setting uh, so I was kind of working on that but here we are we're spitballing a ton of ideas at this point that has really got my noggin jogging at this point let's see so we have that I'm always down to throw spaghetti at the wall and see what sticks. Hey, it's like me in the kitchen. <laughs> Alright, so we should probably go to a new paragraph here. So, let's see. So since, since tiefling are uh, semi-elemental tieflings, like patches of some mineral-like substance growing. Maybe that's what their horns are. They're, they mimic the, the black stones, so they, they still have the, you know, looking like gazelle horns or ram horns, but they're almost like mineral-like as opposed to, what, bone-like? gemstone tieflings kind of like gemstone dragons mm, I mean, maybe i wouldn't go too far into that because they're they're influenced from this this black meteor up here yeah so they're more coal like uh, just took time for people to realize how dumb the humans really are is big because of the fandom and you feel yeah I mean I I enjoy my my MMOs um, but very specific ones you know at this point I enjoy my my Eastern MMOs the action combat kind of stuff uh, for instance Black Desert where some of this lore is actually gonna come from in, in, in a little bit where both coal and bone are carbon so this is fair. This is fair. <clears throat> uh, define influenced culturally or genetically. Tieflings are what they are, yes. So we have gone with a, um, uh, this meteor being of infernal influence, uh, which is another reason why it's, before it was discovered that the, the black stones or the fragments of the meteor were magical, uh, they were seen as a, like a super cold, like it caught, it superheated everything. Uh, which is why we're also getting infernal weapons and things like that. Uh, 
uh, genetically do things exist. That reminds me of the first steel, which was made by Vikings. They first crafted steel weapons by smoking down the bones of beasts, believing this to imbue their weaponry with the spirits of said animals. Perhaps your civilization could do the same with meteor lifted wildlife. Hmm. That's interesting. I, I, yeah, I feel like that there would be some of these Blackstone-influenced creatures. Hmm. Especially since this, uh, we know it to be... Especially anything that eats or eats or lives around rocks. Hmm. I will have to, uh... See, takes a massive bong grip. What if the bones of the civilization destroyed by the cursed black meteor fused with the rock in a fiery impact? Hmm. Uh, so are you going with it was sent from the plane of hell to our plane or like literally aliens got tired of evil? I would feel like... I would feel like sent from the plane of hell because it would have only been during the the second age of of the of the world itself so it hasn't even been around long enough this would have been the time where the 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 humans were still savages the the dwarves had just settled their their seven mountain homes and the the elves hadn't even split between the those that worshipped the the mother tree and those that saw it as a prophet uh, for the the void dragon. So there's uh there's definitely a lot of stuff going on here. That's gonna be that's gonna be a lot of fun to play with. Uh, even in canon, there are conflicts in the nine hells. Yep, devils fighting demons. Demons, demons, demons. <laughs> yeah, I love, you know, I have to admit. I expected this stream to be dead. <laughs> I was not expecting anything. I did this off as just a, you know, if I'm gonna be sitting at my computer typing stuff, might as well turn on the camera, might as well stream it because I don't stream as much as I used to. And uh, some people really want me streaming more. Uh, but I still expected a dead chat. I am, I am just ecstatic that there are, that my chat is so active at this point. I, I really love it. Thank you all so much. It means a lot. This reminds me of back when I first started streaming and my chat, uh, just exploded one day. You kidding me? Do you have any idea how rare world building streams are without some arbitrary rules written down somewhere? I don't know. When I when I looked at the tag, um, or the the thing, I mean, I yeah, I saw one of them, and I everything else was was game. So I guess I didn't realize how rare these were. So um, fair enough. Let's see. Hey, thank you so much for the follow, Glorious Zoat. It's much appreciated. Welcome to the Scooty Squad, as uh, I used to always say back in the day. No rules, no gods, no masters. He probably doesn't have pants. That's, that's for you never to discover. Well, yes, but we're arguing semantics. The point of it being a chunk of hell from another plane that landed on is uh, is the same key point here. 
Yeah, it's, it, I mean, it's it's one of those things where sometimes you gotta come down to the, um, just the slight hand wave of the DM a little bit, because a, a player is never gonna, is never really gonna ask this much, it's just nice to, nice to have. In case, because right now my players, they, they don't know of Blackstones. They've, you know, maybe the, the princess of the dwarves or one of them uh, who was in the campaign would have heard of them but they don't she would know them as you know the thing that fuels the fuels the forges fuels the weaponry uh, oh yeah but it also helps you to create some cool custom oh of course because the players are at some point gonna run into it uh, what if the meteor was sent by the ruler of hell to annihilate a magically culturally advanced civilization? Uh, so are there actual forges set up by infernals that produce weapons? So, I'm not sure if the infernals themselves would do it, maybe. Um, but the, the dwarves saw it as an opportunity to get ahead because they're so they're the they're the oldest civilization the oldest race followed by the elves and at the point of course they're they're wanting to get ahead of everything they're wanting so they're gonna strike out they're gonna go find it and when they get there because this thing sh you know hit the hit the continent and shattered so they don't even have to go to the desert specifically to get it. That's going to be where the largest amount is. But they are, you know, it's going to be found in the mountains. There's going to be shards of it in the earth itself. Uh, you know, resident or... Yes, dwarves the more emerged from the rock. Well, they would have already been there. It's It's kind of one of those things. Um, let's see. Let's see. So the people who fight this meteor civilization, would they have a certain way to dispose of the corpses? I'd imagine burning is out of the question, out of fear of burning the bodies also, causing black one. In fact, <clears throat> they have such a phobia of them that they want to stay at range. The other breathe becomes toxic. Their blood, too, will curse you, they think, making special ranged. Hmm. <clears throat> uh, maybe make a sub-race for all the base races where every race is infected by infernals and now you can have a dwarven tiefling. Yeah, that's one of the... <clears throat> even though I'm not a biggest fan of the... what. Wizards of the Coast did with the Ancestry stuff, I think this would be a good use for it, is a, a use of the, you got the, the Tiefling Dwarf, the, the Half Dwarf, the, the, and things like that. And the Tieflings have an alliance with the Duogar because they were ostracized by the other humanoid races due to their appearances, yeah. So we could, uh, we could also start mixing in, um, a, make a brand new Dragonborn as well. Um, like, its scales are, it's like, it's not a black Dragonborn, and it's not a, it, it's not even metallic or chromatic, it's, like, coal. The Ironborn. <laughs> hmm. All right, here we go. <laughs> uh, I guess we're adding them in. The we'll just call it for now the Blackstone. The Blackstone. Dragonborn. So these would be these would be incredibly rare. Dragonborn are already rare in my world. 
These guys would be even rarer. You could say ebony. That's true. That is true. They could be the... Ebonborn. I'm not even a metalhead. You know what? Yeah, they could be the... Hmm, what about the Ebon Stone? Ebon Stone. Isn't that... Wait, hold on, hold up. <laughs> Why have I heard that from before? Oh, Terraria, of course. <laughs> I was wondering that. Uh, would they be worshipped by the meteor civilization, seen as sort of a chosen one? I feel like they would. Because they would, perhaps, because they, they still have the horns. My Dragonborn, of course, have tails, because every player wants their Dragonborn to have a tail, so might as well make it canon. Maybe they're seen as an evolution of the Tiefling. They're not, but they appear to be to... to them. Hmm. I like this. So I will be, I will be right back. I, I have had way too much tea and water, so I'll be right back. Expect my source book dropping on drive through RPG next month. <laughs> okay, so we have so we have the that dragonborn how much per copy? Let's see. Right. So let's see, the the tiefling are as we said, they're naturally drawn to to the black stones. Uh, all right, guys, uh, I'm pulled elsewhere. I'll try to stop by and later. Next time you you're on your own. Good luck. Thank you so much for stopping by session zero. Thank you so much. So they're going to to strike out on their own, uh, which actually that that can that goes elsewhere. That'll go right here. I'll just steal Matt Colville's idea and list it. At, yep. <laughs> and so here's where we get into the real the real kind of thing that's gonna set these guys up. So we've decided that the that the that the black stones are of course of infernal creation. And so what we're doing here is the the tiefling are going to have a voice in the back of their head. Um, 
a, a black spirit, um, as it's called. I am pulling this from Black Desert, of course, uh, which is going to be a lot of fun. So, let's see. So, they are four, which might play into the idea of the, the horns themselves really mimicking the, the, the look, the sheen, or whatever, of these black stones, because, uh, these black spirits are formed, uh, are formed from larger chunks of black, of black stone, and they have a desire of themselves to become more powerful and so the the stone these larger stones uh, manifest in uh, into these black spirits and they uh, maybe originally it took a little bit for the the black spirits but now they latch on to every tiefling that exists and so, uh, where are we going? So they are... Alright, so we have... Keep me, hoard me, use me, whispers. Kind of. So we have the... Uh, let me... That... And then I paste without formatting. is uh, would the civilization's custom be to cremate the bodies or and this is uh, use their bodies to craft infernal weaponry your spirit shall live on and continue to serve us even further this is a great honor yeah I, I feel I feel like they might actually do that with tieflings uh, because they're or at minimum before they, or maybe either before or when they're, they die, they, you know, saw off their horns. And maybe something else, I don't, you know, their, their finger tips, their, their claws or whatever. Um, cause my world is very dark. So I, that, that feels kind of, kind of like it works. Hmm. Could incorporate bones into weaponry. That's true. It'd be kind of interesting to get these infernal weapons. Of course, you, you did point out they do have rules for them to see them statted and have players find them every so often. But they're just kind of like mixed in there. No spontaneous combustion. Let's see. These actually should have been switched. Uh, when, ooh, when a tiefling comes old enough to old enough I feel like maybe the black spirit hmm how early would I'm trying to think on how early one of these black spirits would actually manifest inside a a tiefling if it would happen immediately or if it's something that grows with them so when they become, for instance, old enough to... When they basically have puberty, right? That the black spirit itself has a puberty? To, to where it's now... Um, it actually now has a, has a voice. Um, and can actually start influencing the tiefling. And that's what's causing the tieflings to strike out... 
any woodwork. Mm. Comes. Let's let's just say of 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 adventuring age. It's ambiguous, right? Uh, becomes of adventuring age. They will uh, voice. Stones. Uh, let's see. Tell me more, Daddy Stone. <laughs> oh boy. This has been great. Love getting my brain juices flowing. Have a good stream. Hey, thank you for stopping by, fanboy, and I hope to see you around again sometime. You've uh, you've really got my noggin jogging. <laughs> uh, this is going to be a lot of fun. So uh, thank you so much. You've really helped out uh, quite a lot. safe ball leader. for that man to be an NPC. <laughs> well, um, I believe I do have it set up to where 3,000 uh, channel points is um, does award you an NPC. How do you get that? Uh, how do you get channel points? Just from watching, just from watching the stream. And you should have next to your, on like the opposite side of where you hit the actual chat, there should be a, a number. I can't, I can't really check myself uh, because for me, I have infinite channel points. <laughs> And then you just uh, go and, and redeem the 3,000 points. You follow the instructions that I have kind of set up. And um, that's, how it, that's how it do. That's how it would be. Uh, let's see. Do 
You're just loaded. So of course I'm looking through the Black Desert lore for these um, these black spirits. So I'm just kind of kind of reading over it, seeing if I can reword how they're done. the bubble looking thing got it yes yeah it's the the black spirit of the little little bubble dude from black desert yeah i thought it was kind of an interesting thing to to kind of have um it also would explain why you know tieflings are gonna be common around adventuring and whatnot now i'm sure it this is where the fun comes in too because you know a player that reads this is going to be oh oh it's the bubble looking thing yeah i'm one third of the way there yeah i need to uh i need to get a new i need to make an icon for the for the scooties uh, i believe uh when you're not subbed i think it's like 200 an hour so it does take a little bit but it's i didn't want a whole bunch of bunch of NPCs being created so it's just kind of a, a long-term thing because if you think about it one D&D &D session is nearly nearly a thousand so or something like that did that make it even more expensive So, black stone. Is um, consumed or is consumed the correct word? Maybe not. Mm. Maybe gathered. No, con consumed is nice because they are they are considered parasitic. Just consumed enough. Enough of the tieflings. I mean, they are they are they are attached to the soul. Rem no, ooh, what about merged with enough of the tieflings, tiefling soul to uh, mana fest. Manifest, Please, but not enough to manif manifest a body. Q. Here we go. 
So it also, going from this, that means I need to... Hmm. So Black Spirits aren't going to be specific to Tiefling, they're just the ones that are always going to have one. And so I should probably stat... It probably doesn't have to stat too much of it, it's just maybe adding one or two moves. Uh, to different things, because in Black Desert, I mean, they even, they even attach to themselves to animals, so they, they're not very picky, they just, the only thing it does, they have one thing in life, is to get stronger, and they'll do anything to reach that goal, so if they attach themselves to a, a deer, that deer is going to go on a rampage. Kind of thing. Hmm. So let's see. So we have that, um... No, YouTube, don't, don't pause the video. Thank you, I'm, I'm using this. <laughs> How dare you? Unafflicted by any black spirits are cast out or used as slaves considering their s their sort Deity has abandoned them. They are lesser. That's true. I could set up a a sub race of a um, uh, The lesser tiefling If thou not be picked ye get hit with the stick A good point. So, uh, hmm. I will, I will have to keep that in mind. Uh, I oh, I meant for all the races in this. That's true. That's right. We are gonna have the the black spirits extend out. Hmm. This is fair. Yeah, that makes sense. Right. So let's see. We have that done. Now I believe this was gonna be. Um, Fling guided by black spirits. Oops. Strike out our own and generally. Usually, oops, 
would usually do not settle down in large communities. What is the largest domesticated, tameable creature known in this world? I haven't decided yet uh, on that, to be honest. Uh, the humans, they of course use horses. The, um, you know, horses, donkey, your standard low fantasy kind of stuff. Um, the dwarves? I haven't really gone that far into, like, their husbandry stuff. Because right now, I, I typically do, like, homebrew world. I Again, I haven't really gotten into too many homebrew creatures, so... Whatever is kind of standard in D&D in &D is tameable and and rideable or domesticated so you do have your your standard your cows your horses and whatnot i feel like you know maybe the the elves might have have dire wolves de depending maybe we'll, we'll get into that uh probably eventually i feel like because at some point players are going to be asking here. So this is... Uh, hmm. This last part... Here is where I had the Dragonborns... Where I put their art. today so let's see there's the there's their pull to be more powerful there's their pull to mine the the black stone and gather it even though they might catch the the petrification disease So, I guess this stuff would, would go in here. Hmm. I guess we can worry not about the section, so... Or... See, this is also where I tend to get stuck. Because <laughs> I've, I've started to kind of run out of steam a little bit. It's why normally I belt out these articles, you know, within an entire day. Uh, you gonna need some coffee or tea? 
I could go for some coffee, so that's a good idea. I can do a, like a five minute, well, it would be a five minute. I can do a BRB and get some coffee and then we can, we can meet back here and I can figure out what the hell to do. <laughs> so I'll be right back. I'm going to go grab some coffee. I'm going to let the, the music keep running, of course. So I'll be right back. Okay, full screen, there we go. At this point I have so many scenes on Streamlabs, uh, even, even with them being named, I constantly get lost with how just how many I have. I don't know how people do it, other than, well, you know, spending a hundred dollars on a, on the, the stream deck, <laughs> so they don't have to, they just see a pretty button instead of, instead of words. I'm gonna wait a little bit on that that coffee before I destroy my mouth. All right, uh, where were we? Oh, right, 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 right. So we have there is the so we have the again we have the the pull for them wanting to be stronger. 
Maybe it's only half and half with a pull for like half of them are pulling for uh, or specifically the black spirit only wants half of them to be stronger and the other half is to be that surf uh, class the ones that are pulled to the to the blackstone mines like uh, like this like the area I think that that that, that works I feel like no lie, I've been learning D and D from here. Oh, <laughs> really? I wouldn't. I'm the. Uh, oof. I am definitely not the best guy about D and D, but one of my players has been playing for years, so uh, I learn a lot from him. And to be fair, I, I learn. I learn through playing. Uh, I've read the DMG. I've read the player's handbook, and most of the time, I don't remember. Uh, I am a need to actually, you know, I'm one of those uh, must like write stuff down to learn it kind of people. So I can't just open the handbook and now I remember that a scimitar is a 1d6 plus mm, whatever modifier. <laughs> I have to have written it down somewhere. Also, nice try, bot. <laughs> you can't... My bot is better than your bot, bot. Get out of here, spammer. Alright, so... Hmm. Let's see... The... Quest for power or let's see the quest for power or Because it's a we're because current consensus is we have that I've I've probably said it about five times in the past five minutes, but thinking of some at this point are actually getting that pull for power, and the others are being pulled to the mines because working in the mines I that's not justifying a strength for power or a, a quest for power unless I mean unless the black spirit within them is seeing it as a quest for power because they're they're still mining they're still close to the black stones instead of going out and Maybe they're seeing it as an easier way, maybe, because one way, you know, is going to be years of training, you know, they're looking to become knights, uh, vigilantes, uh, they don't even care if they're bandits, um, just anything that gives them strength, better weapons, better armor, um, bigger muscles, I guess, um, that kind of thing. Or the easy way, consuming Blackstones, right? That would at least empower the Black Spirit, which maybe in return 
powers the can power the host. Hmm. Maybe that's where their innate spell casting is coming from. So the black stone is steroids. Yeah, I suppose they could they could snort the black stone powder. Lady Grey, two teaspoons of sugar. I got my coffee <laughs> and my big old mug. I need I still need to get that Easter Island head mug that everyone wants me to have. And not <laughs> People are trying to get me to get one of those dungeon daddy mugs. Anyone want any coffee? I made coffee. <laughs> Oh, I love that video. Right, yeah, you know what? Let's just leave it at the, the quest for power. So, I've already kind of said it, right? The... They're going to... be influenced, potentially, by the by the black spirits to want to go out and in and in and adventure whether it's in to them it doesn't matter right the the black spirits don't give a shit they just want them to be stronger and their host the tiefling to be stronger so they don't care if they're going to become a part of the king's army or if they're going to be a bandit. Whichever one gives them weapons, armor, strength, whatever, doesn't matter. Which doesn't, that feeds in, because aren't tieflings... Chaotic. That's right. Tieflings are... They do incline towards the chaotic alignment, and that fits now that I've said that out loud. His host just starts taking a ton of steroids, and the spirit goes, Oh, okay, not my plan, but this works, I guess. That's actually... You know, that's actually, I believe, in the Black Desert lore. So, um, because at some point, the, the Black Spirit is growing in power with the host, right? They are connected via the soul. So at some point, the Black Spirits do have a phase, or um, they've consumed enough, even though they're not eating at all, to where they think they can take over the host and become permanent, which might explain a lot of the completely evil tieflings, right? They've maybe fully lost their way at this point, or it creates a, a monster, you know, an abomination. So that's one thing that could be done. Give me a fat line of the Void Stone. Now I'm reluctant to put in Blackstone Powder <laughs> into, into my campaign, because I feel like um, my Bard is just going to snort it. Uh, would there be situations where the Black Spirit tries to take over, but it goes wrong and the mortal remains in power? Yes, in fact, that directly happens in the storyline of Black Desert. You don't defeat it, but all this power that it's gained... Now, of course, through time, it's changing its appearance. You know, it starts out as this little blob. It kind of you know, looks like a plushie. And then it grows more and more kind of terrifying. And... But when it tries to take over... You, of course, as the main character, you're not, you're not gonna lose. 
it goes back to being tiny. You still have all of your strength, but the Black Spirit is back to being at its weakest point. So I feel like that's one way of maybe the Tiefling, because at that point, the Tiefling has enough power that it can probably just ignore. The Black Spirit is still there in the back, back of its mind. Hey, go get more power. You know, feed me. And it's Tiefling or whatever is like, you know, I don't need to listen to you anymore. I've gotten what I've wanted. You know, I am, I am in command now. I am the captain now. I've been the captain, but I'm really the captain. an interesting interesting take on the the parasitic nature of these things yeah the tiefling might as well get get power yeah the 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 black spirit would never be able to catch up basically it may still be able to go through the different forms but you know, probably by the time it gets back to to try again, there's no point. <laughs> because, you know, the tiefling's probably already a you know, fifteenth level in a in a in a in the sense of D and D, you know, could cash wis the uh, cast wish and just yeet the black spirit out of itself at that point. So yeah, works for me. So, influence, influence. And I will make a, a dedicated article on the Black Spirit itself um, to make make this stuff a little bit more clear. So we'll have it it uh, link back to it and whatnot. Black spurt. Thank you. Influenced by the black spirit. Every time I hear spirits, I remember the horror I faced when playing Witcher 3. Oh boy. That's right. I still... As much as I... I'll be honest. I... I like the lore. And I like the Witcher stuff. I cannot be damned to play the games. <laughs> I try to play the... The third one, of course, you know, the one that everyone has played. I hated the controls. Mouse and keyboard, controller, it just all felt so clunky to me. I just, I couldn't. Which is a shame, because it looks, it looks fun, but I, I just can't handle it. So, if the spirit takes over, they become some sort of... Meteor... Hmm. Hmm. Yeah, that... Yeah, you know, that kind of, that, that works, actually. Okay, I will add that to the ideas. So, with the Black Spirits, we have... Black Spirits. 
spirits. Let's see. Um, oops. We'll try to take over the coast. And if successful, becomes some becomes something like a. And I'll I'll go through I'll I'll go through more of it. Um, let's see if it fails to take over a post, it hurts to its weakest form. What would a possessed and non What do you mean by possessed and non-possessed? You mean between a possessed and a non-possessed tiefling? Uh... There's no appearance differences, right? They are... The black spirits themselves are... Uh... They're just missing the, the voice in the back of their head, basically. Otherwise, you know, these black spirits, even when they come out, because they do have a... For instance, uh, if you've played uh, Twilight Princess, right? You have Midna when she's in her imp form, and when you're in regular Hyrule, and she comes out as the, the shadow, no one else can see Midna. Supposedly, right? That's kind of what these black spirits are. It's not... It starts out as the voice, but then gets the, like, a shadow form that only they can see, but other magical beings, they can't see it, but they are, like... I know something's wrong with you. <laughs> kind of thing. Vengeance Demon Hunter Metamorphosis comes to mind in... Hmm. Yeah? Yeah, that's true. Hmm. Hmm. Yeah, I like this. This is... There's so many good ideas here. And you know that a a player because now that a let's be fair <laughs> players that play tieflings play them very strangely i feel like not only is this an interesting narrative piece for uh players that may be around an npc tiefling but this the black spirit is a is a great dm device too right now it's something you'd have to sit back and pull aside and talk to the player about because they may not want the the black spirit influence so they would have a spidey sense to it yes uh, i only had one idea since i don't really play so um Tieflings, tiefling players are, tieflings by nature in straight D&D are chaotic, and so a lot of players play them as the, you know, they make combo with a rogue, and so they'll steal from the players, they'll stab an NPC, and stuff like that. Uh, let's see, <laughs> I'm just a hype man. Feel that. A tiefling warlock, but it's actually a sorcerer who delves into his 
fiendish heritage and rips the powers from the Nine Hells himself. Screw having packs with some sort of devil, he can do it himself, he just has to be careful not to draw any attention from the devils. I like that. But I'll get an NPC one day. That's fair. I should reiterate, um, 3,000 channel points does get you an NPC in the game. <laughs> they can be an adventurer. Uh, now, of course, they're never going to be rain with the party, though they may run into them. Uh, you know, tavern keepers, barmaids, blacksmiths. <laughs> the only thing that's off the list is nobles. Those are the only ones that it's like, that has heavy influence, I'm getting there. See, I, I like having my D&D games to be very interactive, that's why I stream them, right? Because I could be just running these games privately every Saturday. But I don't want that, and I also don't really like the when I go to uh, watch D and D streams, even during a, a downtime or even on break, no one talks to chat. I don't like that too much. I like the interaction, and so while I may not be able to speak to chat very often because I'm narrating or having to listen to a player. I do like the, hey, um, you know, too much seriousness kills the vibe, definitely. I mean, you know, at that point, why don't you just record and put it on YouTube instead of streaming it to Twitch kind of thing. So again, I may not be able to speak to chat every so often, but I'm there, I can see chat, I can respond to it when I can. And then I also like the influence, right? Like, right now, you are influencing my world. That's, yeah, that's that's fair. It's why I, I don't respond to every comment like I am now. If I'm playing D&D, &D, um, I respond to chat during downtime, basically. Unless it's something funny. <laughs> that has uh, caught me off guard and then I'm then I might respond because it's it's killed me and, and uh, killed my players but most of the time you know if you go through the channel points you have things like the the blessings the charms uh, the the gifts which are kind of like the um, Oh, what do you call it? The Hunger Games gifts, you know, they just kind of appear. Uh, some people have done it in the pockets of, of my, my party. Uh, some of them have been like, hey, on the next corpse or whatever, you know, X player finds something and it's, it's kind of nice. Uh, the best way to be funny is sarcastically mock players' choices a bit. Oh yes, <laughs> you can uh, you can ask our bard about that. We um, he is not the butt of the party, um, though he feels like he is. Uh, but he has been he rolled a nat one uh, when trying to handle horses, so he got kicked in the shin. Uh, he took the first damage of this of the the campaign actually because of it uh he's also decided despite being a bard he is going to be a recluse <laughs> and will go off into corners of areas and play his instruments um, i've made sure a, a crowd of npcs gathered around him uh, he also nearly killed the entire party too so um you know he deserves a little bit of the ribbing he uh, stole from a an offerings table uh, ten, 10 gold, mind you, for a job where they're getting 300. Um, stole from the very crypt uh, where they're supposed to lay a body. <laughs> it's 
so um you know he sicked a, a ghostly paladin on on the entire party it was a uh, very fun Someone in WoW RP, they were named Gron Slayer, claimed they could kill a Gron on their own. I contested this, so when we were fighting a Gron and finished a strike roll, and the finishing strike roll was done, he rolled a 99 and went, ha, Gron Slayer, bitch. Then I rolled a 100. Nice. typos I am um, <laughs> I have not um, written like an English paper in uh, five years so <laughs> it's just one of those things you know actually mocking is my specialty <laughs> that is true <laughs> I've uh, I've taken quite a note on that but hey you always you're always there livening up my chat during uh, d and d on Saturdays it's always nice to have you around hey Stanford welcome to the stream welcome welcome glad you could stop by lost most of the stream yeah we've been uh i went live pretty early today hello lunatic design welcome 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 to the stream much appreciated to have you uh it's been a bit of a it's been a bit of a chaotic stream um but in the good way right <clears throat> and lost the last two D, &D streams Ooh. Oh, have they, have they, um, uh, been automatically deleted by, by Twitch at this point? Oh. It's, uh, yeah, the, the, it's a shame that, um, I should be archiving them, I really should, but I don't have the storage for them at all, uh, anymore. You know, I need a, I, I really need a dedicated hard drive if I'm gonna go back to doing that. I will try to watch them. All right. Uh, I'm bad at that too. Just filled with assignments. Yeah, I feel that. So this has been a bit of a chaotic stream. This was originally supposed to be uh, talk, designing and talking about my tieflings, but we've gone and expanded way past that. Uh, we've, you know, I have ideas over here for an entire age of of my world at this point to fill out one of them twitch has thanos snapped this man ideas create create ideas this is very true so we have uh, some a very unique um tiefling origin here it's still close ish to the original tiefling because they do have the infernal influence but they are just slightly different with how they came to be. Uh, old, old TiVo units and those kinds of things have terabyte hard drives and they can be picked up for cheap. That's fair. That is... that's a good idea. Hmm. Alright. I'll, uh, I'll 
I'll keep that in mind. Thank you for letting me know. Yesterday and it seemed relevant to archiving. Yeah, that is, that's fair. Let's see how cheap are they. Oh yeah, those are. Damn yeah, those are pretty cheap. Hmm. Yeah, you're right about that one. Alright. Cool beans. I will uh, keep a note on that. Alright. Uh, let's see. So, a naturally weaker tiefling may go for a stranger approach and... Petrifying disease, which I will I will expand on the petrifying disease. Uh, if I go back through this, it would be hmm, probably under magic. Maybe this is how I have everything set up. Most of these are actually empty at the current moment uh, because I'm still. I only did this setup yesterday. Um, but I still, I have a lot of stuff, I just haven't moved it over, and I have to move a lot of stuff out of Word, World Anvil, because I'm sick of it. Are you going to make this file available? I will be, yes. I will be. This will be for people to read, for incoming players, because I, like I said, I do want to expand out to one-shots, right? I want to be able to have an adventure in the um, in a different age. You know, while the main campaign is going on in the sixth age, what's stopping me from having one shots in the age of dragons, uh, where you're going off to become the dragonborn, the first uh, dragonborns, the the drake blood knights you know you're all task you're out there i mean you're starting at level 10 or whatever and you're out there to kill a dragon you know no dungeon just kill the damn dragon drink its blood become a dragon kin or well and there you go there's a story that now the players in the current campaign can find uh, can hear about the, these um, great blood knights. It's a cool way to handle world lore. Oh yeah, I think it's it'll be a lot of fun. And you know that's what my I want my community to become. Uh, I I am a variety streamer. But I'm really into D and D at the moment, so I want to expand on D and D stuff. Because it's a lot of fun, and it... Music has gotten loud, okay. How is that? Is that better? I swear if the next song is just quiet. <laughs> is that better? Okay. Yeah, that's, you know, that's the downside of these. Um, they're all set up with, you know, it's three hours of, or two hours of music, and half of them are quiet, and the other half are blow your speakers out loud. <laughs> uh, always fun. Let's 
Let's see. Dungeons and Dragons, just dragons. Yep. Alright, so we have the Petrifying Disease has been brought up. Uh, we have... I use music that I got from Hundle. The... Oh, what was it? The, um... Was it one of the recent, uh, like, fantasy bundles? Because I, I picked that stuff up, too. Uh, sadly, I couldn't, uh, and I got, I did get a bunch of people to, to get it as well, because I'm a, I am partnered with Humble Bundle. Uh, that actually brought in, brought in a little, little chunk of change for me. And a really nice selection of music. Let's see. Uh, so we have that. Um, hmm. I almost feel like I don't need any of these other paragraphs here. At least at the current moment. But maybe so. Uh, unfamiliar with D&D, but how often do we have a party entirely serve? A lot of times those are regulated to, like, one-shots or, you know, like, five sessions. They typically aren't like what's going on now, where it's an, a whole storyline. But, no, they do happen. Uh, a lot of players do like them because it's gets a chance to get their inner, like, murder hobo -ness out you know they may have an all orc party or an all goblin party i don't think i've ever seen one where it's their bandits but that could work i suppose and technically the um going back here to the drake blood knights they're not always the good guys in some of these they, they're out there to, they worship dragon blood, so they're going to kill a chromatic dragon, they're going to kill a metallic dragon, they just want the blood. A party full of bandits, sounds like a normal murder hobo group. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> that is very, very much true. I always wanted to have a full cleric party and call them the A-Man. The A-Men. <laughs> oh boy. Uh, I believe one of my groups uh, that I ran in this world, uh, they were they were a mixture of clerics and paladins. They were they were all holy. And it worked. <laughs> I'll give him that one. Let's see, four bandits party can't enter half the taverns in the world because there's a good chance at least one of them got kicked out of that one already. Grey knights like eh, like guys. I mean, I guess, so while I, I think on this one, why don't we go towards the attitude from the different races, I feel like. So... So this is atti attitudes towards different races. Or, well, to be fair, this would be <laughs> other races' attitudes towards tieflings, to be fair. Um... So I think dwarves would like the tieflings, especially since, you know, almost half of them want to, to mine 
black stones and dwarves love their black stones <laughs> uh, they want them for the weapons they want them for all that stuff so they're willing to they're at least tolerant of them is how i would feel i would feel like elves would absolutely hate them especially because elves would just naturally be able to sense the the black spirits on them as elves often do yeah pretty much so they would be naturally just disgusted just because of not really because of what they look like but because of the 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 black spirit within them that they can feel humans well humans are humans um but if they're willing to mine, they're going they're gonna be looked down upon, but not hated. Uh unless around magical or ma um, bleh, magic using or magic wielding. Well see, it's something like to me, a a wizard has stud has, you know, uses magic because they studied it they're not going to have that ability to have the spidey sense or whatever for the the black spirits a sorcerer on the other hand would so you know a, a wizard would be completely chill with a with a tiefling because they're interesting and interesting and they should be studied but a sorcerer is not going to have anything to do with it unless they're an evil sor sorcerer basically dragonborn this is where it's always one of those things it's like uncommon race meets an uncommon race <laughs> hmm i feel like this section only matters to the even rarer ebon stone dragonborn in that Dragonborn, of course, as stated in here, are uh, courtesy even extends to tieflings, so they do like the tieflings. Uh, but the tieflings are like. They only care about the Ebon Stone, which are. You know, for every 100 various dragonborn there's maybe one ebon stone and ebon stone of course they are they're unique because they're not they're not a true well i guess they are a dragonborn right but they are born they're basically in a way a tiefling dragonborn they are their scales are more coal like they're not black and they're not like shiny black or anything. They are, they have that, they're almost like, they're like matte, right? Because they're, they're like coal, kind of like soot like. Um, I'll stat them eventually. I think it'll be kind of interesting to, to have them. I don't think I would stat them enough to have a player be able to play them though. I feel like that they are way too rare to let a player have one. Even though they're basically a reskinned Dragonborn already with maybe a, a different breath weapon, right? A, a, a black powder breath, which would be like reskinned poison or something. Still don't think I would give, a, 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 give that to a player. Hmm. Alright, so we have... Humans are... Yeah, so, um, of course the black stones are these... They, uh, broke off from a, a black infernal, uh, meteor. 
in shattered into a bunch of shards uh, called black stones. Black stones are originally described as being a super coal. <clears throat> um, and so I feel like that they their breath <clears throat> I don't want it to just be fire. So I have a feeling they would have some type of weird like like almost like a smoke breath, right? And black stones can be broken down into black stone powder. So I feel like they would have that. And breath causes black lung. It could take on the effect of the of the petrifying disease, right? So these guys would be they would be both hated and they would be scared to death of, of these very, very rare dragonborn. Because they could just walk into a cat they could just walk into a city and just, you know, cause the entire city to crumble from the petrifying disease, which has no known cure. Now I know in D D that yes, there would be a cure thanks to the way D D works, but um in the current lore of the world, there is no cure, <laughs> because not everyone um, knows these things, right? Maybe it's a um, lost time kind of thing. So if I come back to here, um, uh, okay. It's funny now that I, I, I literally listed out exactly what each of these races feel about the tieflings, but as soon as I go to put it on paper, It's, just, it's it's gone. <laughs> so I know for a fact I had the the elves uh, really. Uh, Blackstone Dragonborn that's level twenty. His breath is so OP. Wish can't remove it. <laughs> right, it just reverses it a stage. So instead of being fully petrified, you have the I'm walking at one foot uh, per round kind of thing. Towards other races. Let's see, it becomes an into interesting part of the afflicted. Yeah, that is true. It's it's actually like in there, it's just like becomes a part of them. Maybe it's because it's um Affecting the soul, just like because black stones are connected to the black spirits, which are connected to souls. So maybe that's the. If you don't have. Well, and maybe not want to go that far, and it's just it's basically black lung and and stuff like that. It, it is it's just a otherworldly disease kind of thing. No, but I was messing around now. That's fair.
is a threat. <clears throat> Here we go. All right. Oh. Uh, let's see. Uh, hey, could the black spirits manifest themselves in some sort of golems nearby, creating black stone? Yes, I, I feel like they they could. They could, um, yeah, they can, uh, even in Black Desert them itself, they can possess, um, possess inanimate objects. So, yeah, there could be Black Spirit golems and Warforged and whatnot. They, they have no, they are... They're not picky, is is like is is how it's actually worded. Uh, Twitch didn't eat the last two D and D streams. Thank God. <laughs> uh, I wonder how much longer. One of them is the 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 latest one, or no, the the oldest one will go away next. Uh next saturday that's that's definitely i know because uh twitch deletes vods every two weeks for a for an affiliate like myself so you got you got time i will watch it by then cool beans All right, so we have the elves. Hey, Caden, thank you so much for the hundred biddies, and I see I see we are still up with the stream. Oh yes, <laughs> uh, we've had a very busy stream today. We have um, completely designed the tieflings. Um, they are shush, shush, you do quiet. You're, you're, you're kind of loud. <laughs> um, maybe that's just in my own, my own ears. Um, we still bull and get. Uh, we have designed the tieflings. They are, they're still slightly infernal, but they have, uh, a lot of flair to them. That's not, uh, you wouldn't confuse a... A standard D and D tiefling with um, one of my tieflings, which fits right in with my cannibalistic elves. Uh, so I like that my world is is unique in that principle, uh, and it's one of those things what hasn't gone. I don't feel like it's gone too far, because you know some people they when they make a homebrew world. They go way too extreme, right? They make it to where you can't even recognize it as D and D. Um, but I'm still, I'm still in the realm of possibilities uh, with with it being D and D. Yeah, I've caught bits and pieces, especially the whole dark and grim part. Yeah, that's um, that's my world. I like the I like the kind of darker, darker stuff. Um, let's see. Are you making the world to run it or to make the world? I am making it to run, and in fact, I already have a campaign going on. Uh, I play every Saturday. I stream it here on Twitch, actually. Um, but this is so players can get a feel for the world, because I do have a I have a good mixture of players that only care about the mechanics. Because uh, I mean, if you're just making it to run it, 
So you're right. It is a uh, some of it has gone too far, um, or maybe, but it's it's you know there's lore checks, um, but also it it is kind of to, to have it because it never fails. I will make something or and not touch on it enough, and a player is just is damned to ask about it and then pick me apart because I didn't have something ready <laughs> because for instance um you know I'll I'll forget something like um the the undead rising well I have stuff for that in my world it's Something I can't really mention because I believe I have a player in here. I think. Um, but it has to do with the Shadow Fell weakening, the barrier between my world and the Shadow Fell weakening. Well, damned if the player isn't hell bent on how does that work? How, what, is, is there certain hot spots? Is it blah, 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 blah? It's like, stop asking my NPCs these questions. <laughs> and I know you're asking me, the DM, but stop asking my players. Or stop asking my NPCs. Because so many of them have to go, look, I'm just a lowly, you know, soldier of the church. Yeah, well, see, that's the, the thing. They were asking a... Um, a soldier of the church and so it's like they were expecting him because the church had given a explanation for why it was happening and when but they tried to pick on it and the church and the guard is just like I I'm just a 60 year old soldier <laughs> you know but it's something I'm also missing in my world building too, to where even because I've left it at that, right? The the church has given its explanation and that's it. If they were to go and ask um the head the the king himself, who is the head of the church, he's gonna be like, Did you see the paper? The the announcement we made? That's it. <laughs> and so it's like, I would rather go overkill and then not have enough because a player is just, they always find that little thing. Especially my players because I have a mixture of half role players and half I want to know the mechanics. <laughs> So when you bring up something, they're like, well, is this like this? Maybe. <laughs> I don't know. But it's also, you know, if, if a player reads through the tiefling thing and they, for instance, don't want the, the black spirit influence, they don't have to have it. I'm not going to force them to, to, to deal with me as a DM being in the back of their head. As one that has roleplayed with Winter, I can definitely see him picking stuff apart. Um, well, see, that's the thing. The, the Tiefling don't have an empire anymore. Well, they never had one to begin with. So they're just scattered about the world. Because they, um, that entire year when they were born, um, or when the thing crashed down, hey, Moist Dark, welcome, welcome to the stream. Uh, because they are in the, um, the human empire, the, the, the empire of Sanctus, and so they would definitely run into tieflings, um, and so there might be an NPC that, you know, he's going to, when he's talking to someone, he may look off to the side, past them, or past them, and say something that, 
like speak to their black spirit right and that is something for the players to pick up on and it allows me to role play because i can choose to this npc is heavily influenced by their black spirit to where they're going to straight up like players say something black spirit in their head i don't have to role play it of course because the players don't see the black spirit the black spirit is going to be the one to answer uh, in a way or i can have it to where the tiefling is going to straight up talk to the black spirit um with the party there and the party's confused and he's kind of arguing um with the spirit or just one that's already blown off the spirit um doesn't listen and and stuff like that it's just it's fun it's nice to expand and plus i want you know i'm i'm giving this file out this entire this drive will have a link that anyone in my discord can read you know and i mean there was someone here earlier that was um while he was helping me out he thought it was cool to have a part of it in in his world so you know it's just um instead of paying 99 cents or whatever to have my campaign on drive through rpg it'll be here for for people so it's nice to go further for people to pull out what they like. I'm not a I'm not a writer or anything, so it's just it's fun. It's also a nice use of my my time and my creative writing. And I have been ranting about this for like the past 5 or 7 minutes. I horribly I, <laughs> I apologize for that. <laughs> oh boy. Anyways, let's see, have, because I have Dragonborn here, this is how world building streams go, this is true. So, Dragonborns, they have, uh, they have Tolerant, including Tieflings. So... You know what? No, I'm gonna I'm gonna take this out. Um, uh, we go on a huge tangent of a hundred ideas and then go off tangent talking about off topic stuff. This is very very true. Um, so let's see here. Yeah, let's get rid of the dragonborn stuff. That can be. I, I can put in the minor races thing. Let's just worry about the three major races. Because otherwise this, this list would be so damn long. Because you would have the orcs, the half orcs, the the elves in both of their factions. and So three major races. Dwarves, humans, elves. Totally how this list was set up. Humans are going to be... No, the dwarves are going to be tolerant. Because unlike the... It's one of those things... I know in, in normal D&D, the tieflings are disliked because of their appearances. But I believe they're also a... I could be wrong, but I believe they're one of the younger races... I believe. Um, so I feel like if tieflings have been around since literally the second age of the of the world, yes, they are rare, and they were basically more common back then. They they wouldn't be disliked other than the fact that it seems like they're well chaotic they're they're not predisposed to fight in the king's army or they will but then you also meet a bunch of the the you know bandit ones and they're just as 
It's like vicious, you know. Uh, look, my dude, you like rocks, I like rocks, we cool, we cool. <laughs> That's true. Um, so. Let's see. Dwarves. Or. Okay, I'll, I'll retype the word about four times <laughs> but before we get there. I'm tolerant of the tiefling, tieflings. Um, uh, because they... Do you like, do you like sniffing stones, man? I got that black... I got that black stone powder. I got the good stuff. Closeness. The good good. Ooh. Willing. That works because it's one of those things where, um, you know, these these races at this point, they know of the petrifying disease. It's been around for a while. They know the dangers of the mine. What would happen if a poor soul tried? That's where the basically the petrifying disease comes in, right? It's kind of like um, in the coal mines, right? black lung so it's you know you're going at it with a pickaxe and and all that stuff and you're breathing in the the particles and so the dust itself is pretty dangerous yes basically but it comes at the the extra of starting in the lungs but you're also slowly being petrified. And we do, I do mean slow. It can be years and years before you're, yeah, you'll notice the sluggishness, slu sluggishness. You'll, um, you know, you'll see the bits of rock on your body or your skin slowly turn to stone. But at that point, you have nothing else to... That's grimdark. It's very dark. <laughs> and they're, at that point, they're... They're stuck, right? People don't want to interact with these petrifying... Slowly, these people being slowly petrified, so they're stuck working in these mines. Until they become part of the mine, basically. You know, you go into these mines, and there are what, to someone that doesn't know this area, it's like, why are there statues in here of, of, um, of miners? Who puts statues in a mine of miners? That's weird. And then someone goes, oh no, that was Steve. He, he fully turned to stone last week. Ugh. <laughs> it's like, ugh. It's, um... Hmm. Now, of course, and that's a, that's a great adventure hook, too, for, for players, because they... They may want to, if, especially if they're good aligned, that they may want to figure out what the hell this shit is, and if a cure can be developed. Because uh, right now, there is no cure. There's a way to slow it down, but no cure. This kingdom actually exports some fine statues to faraway nations. Oh no. Ooh. Hmm. 
now that's now that's metal. And now that's some proper grimdark. Humans and humans, of course. Tieflings. You know, at some point, you know, it's one of those things where I've typed out the word tiefling. Um, the word tiefling so much. And while tiefling itself is not a real word, even though it is being picked up by Google Documents, it just, it doesn't look real anymore I've <laughs> maybe in about half an hour I call the the stream to an end because <laughs> I think my eyes are starting to well, this is not crossing they're starting to cross a little bit uh, thankfully I have dark mode on my Google documents otherwise I would have been dead about you know an hour ago I believe actually do I have... Oh, please tell me I do. Um... Is it not... Well, that kind of... <laughs> hmm. So I guess some of these... Well, yeah, because I copy and pasted it, so they're going to have the... Yeah. Oh, well, we can work with this for a little bit, right? <laughs> That's a little bit better, and I can turn it back later. Oh, that's so much better. Um, complicated history. Let's see, uh, humans. Yeah, it's just, I mean, this is a, um, a gothic world, so it's, um, it's just, they're just grotesques. <laughs> you know, sell them right beside the, the gnarled, disgusting-looking gargoyle. This guy's never even, even heard of gargoyles. There we go. Let's see, some humans accept tieflings, uh, despite their school. Minor gargoyles. I mean, you gotta feel like in, in the last moments, the, all of the, the, the mining, minor statues are probably, they're probably, I mean, it's, you know, probably the last moments are um, probably a lot of agony involved. <laughs> I, I would feel like, you know, as it finally takes hold of you. Oh man, that's really dark. But hey, it works.
do some people survive or resist the plague? Hmm. Um, at the current, there are some that can resist it longer than, than others. Um, but I don't think that there's, I don't, I don't think there's a surviving it unless I have it to where like it's maybe they're, they have the innate spell casting to where they're now like a talking statue, right? Uh, how do you activate dark mode? Um, I have a, an extension called, what is it called? Uh, Google Docs dark mode. Um, and so it has two, uh, two modes. It has the, this being black or the, the page or, or both. Also, yeah, that's that's a good point. We could have some of them being living statues. They can't move. Fear not, mortals. I have returned. Welcome, welcome. Just in time as we're starting to... We're going into the last half hour of the stream and we're um, back to talking about the petrifying disease. Kind of like instead of dying from it, they fuse and change. Hmm. You know, hold on one second. Let me. Let's see here. I believe Black Desert actually has something about that. Black Desert. Uh, are we still in the Blackstone year, right? We are uh, wrapping up the, the Tiefling stuff. Uh, we were just talking about how the races, the three major races feel about them. But we've, you know, we kind of, uh, Stanford, who's a longtime viewer of mine, popped in um, kind of late into the stream. So we've been going over the, the petrifying disease and the... Um, and the, the effects of that kind of stuff. And so we kind of got into the, um, that kind of stuff. So let's see here. Does... Yeah, so if I bring this over here, oops, come on down. There we go. Nope. There we go. So if we kind of go over to this, so of course the petrifying disease is kind of coming from Black Desert. Um, yeah, they turn into the same, yeah. So we actually, it's kind of nice that they have some screenshots here. Let me kind of bring this over here a little bit because my my webcam is slightly in the way of course but you have the I have I feel like if I'm not mistaken this is a, a full petrified one so they at the last second they're gonna freeze into whatever you know their last moments here you have a, a partial half petrified uh, maybe telepathy of those who survive the disease yeah that makes sense. Yeah, they could have um, the again the going back to the the talking statues. Would be would be kind of kind of interesting to have. So we'll go back to the ideas thing. We have the Petra. Ooh we. I promise I can spell petrifying. Petrifying disease. We have the uh, slowly turn to stone. 
we have the um, chance of remaining conscient, conscience, con, con I imagine something like the ghoul from Fallout, instead of dying from the radiation, it changes them into something else. Yeah. That's true. They can be, some of them have gone uh, feral, in a way. Uh, maybe because it does kind of... Because I feel like it would, you know, the, the thought of slowly turning to stone I feel like that could drive someone mad someone mad uh, could even be fiendish elementals like Zorin that's true they have a chance of even either being solid statues um the like living statues where they they are immortal basically of course unless they're smashed up of course uh, and the ability to communicate um, or they do turn into some type of rock, um, elemental, like a, like a Zorn or something. That's true. Full stone to an element statue. statue or some type of rock creature mobile uh, stone I'll just call it a stone creature for now right so we have that uh, we do know that the the tiefling are going to be uh, some races like the Tiefling and mm, who else? Um, I feel like just some of the 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 strain like the the Dragonborn would be. Uh, it would slow them. It would they would be resistant. They're still they still catch it, of course, but instead of like say five years, it takes ten years to or like seven. You know it's. Again, once you get it, you're kind of stuck, supposedly, uh, that the, the world currently knows about. Which, again, is a pretty cool plot hook for players that run into it. And you know what? You're... Hmm. You're... You're correct on... You know what? That's, that's a good point. So... Um, in my world, the dwarves are the creators of the Warforged. Now they have a reason to have created them. Because of the, the Blackstones. Hmm... I just realized this page. Hold up. I was wondering why my eyes were starting to hurt. Come on now. Thank you. Uh, consumed by it. Um, well, like, um, also, isn't coal dust radioactive? So, like, you could mirror the disease to be, like, forming black rock tumors over the skin. That's true. It it could start out as the as the the tumors, 
and then from the tumors spread the 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 stone flesh basically hmm yeah i like that I like that So we have um, let's see disease. Oops. Disease starts starts as small like stone or that this is this is gonna be uh i really do like this i know that a lot of this is there's still a chance that a lot of this gets passed over by players whether it's this session or excuse me this campaign or the next one unless yes uh, I hope this is the feeling that you wanted for the setting of Warhammer-esque, industrial, metal, hellish, and brutal setting. Yes. Uh, my fiancé, who is one of my players in the game, uh, asked me why I don't just... Why I don't just run Warhammer. <laughs> um... And she's right, in a way, because my dwarves are Warhammer-inspired. Right? They even have the same kind of beginning going on. Um, but I also, you know, I've, I started with Pathfinder slash 3.5. And, like, I'll be honest, I really don't want to learn a new system right now. <laughs> now, I will still probably rip parts of Warhammer out, but I don't think I'd run it from... The, the Warhammer. I may steal some of their, some of the mechanics, maybe, like the, uh, the Fury, right? I forget what it's called. The, where you, where you crit, you roll, and I think if it's, what is it, max dice, you roll again, and keep going until you're not hitting max dice or whatever. Uh, you can steal the setting and run it with your preferred system. This is true. Yeah. That's what I've, uh, I've kind of slowly been doing. Uh, but it really was just kind of the, the dwarves that I wanted to steal. Um, my humans are a little different. Yeah, settings don't equal system. Yep. Um, let's see. Um, you know, my elves are completely different. They're, you know, they're, I mean, they're still pretty dark. I mean, they're, they're ritualistic cannibals, which I love that that comes up every session because we have an elf in our party. So it gets brought up every damn time. <laughs> Uh, it's 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 a, it was a lot of fun because a lot of my players didn't read that about my elves and so when the player who was a great role player 
uh, brought up the the wait why don't you guys just just eat the bodies the the campaign was derailed for like 10 minutes because everyone was dying because they did not know <laughs> poor fan and that character is going to have PTSD at this point from the amount of times they've been set on fire. And of course they're the one that gets the the, the flaming <clears throat> the flaming dagger. Oh boy. And he still doesn't even know what fully is in store with that dagger either. He is uh he has not attuned to it yet. Uh also remember kids, wrap it before you tap it. Yeah. Alright, so we have... And to think all of this, you know, I mean, I, I know this is nearly a four hour stream, but... This is a lot of stuff that even if I, you know, of course I'm going to take a break in, in 15 minutes and... I may continue writing off stream. Um, but I mean, this is a lot of stuff that will, can carry over quite a lot because, um, you know, with the Black Spirits, that's not confined to only Tieflings, right? They will take over anything that they, they, because their quest is only power. So yes, they are naturally attracted to fully uh, smart races or creatures like humans and dwarves. But if they have no options, they'll take over a, an animal, right? So we can have um, black spirit powered dire wolves, for instance, uh, going back to the, the ravenous, hungry dire wolves from the, the third session. Maybe that's why they were actually, <clears throat> excuse me, voice crack. <clears throat> Maybe that's why they were there. I don't know. Probably not. They were regular dire wolves. <laughs> um, I need to expand on the ebon stone dragonborn. Uh, we have the Petrifying Disease, which, I mean, that's an entire city, right? Because a city is was set up because the capital, so the, the, the human empire was only unified 51 years ago. And the, the capital knows of Blackstones. They, they've cleared out all of their minds in fact condemned them condemned them to the point that they're basically leper colonies right but there's still in other because it basically took over 12 other nations um there's still active sites and one of them is one of these cities where it's a it's a mining town like in in West Virginia right that's all it does it doesn't have any other exports other than blackstones so it knows it's going to be cracking the whip on that on that city which you know used to be a capital and now it's a vassal and even not even a vassal anymore it's just you know it's covered in or filled with soldiers of the of uh, of sanctus um, from capital guards that don't care about the lives of the of the residents. So it's like, you know, get your ass to the mines and stuff like that. So it's um, the petrifying disease in this city of itself is um, could almost be a campaign of its own. You know, uh, or... Um, and it not uh, an adventure at minimum to where you know while the main campaign is going on if they don't want to deal with this mining city and the mines who says i can't 
a, a time permitting, of course, to run a group of adventurers that are that have either stumbled upon this this area or were sent to deal with it or actually from there. I don't know. I like throwing out ideas. Because I, I want there to be jumping in points for one-shots and other adventures because right now I have um, kind of all the time in the world. You know, I don't I don't currently work or anything like that. And um, I don't know. D&D has been very, very good to my... It's been done... It's very good to my channel. And it's, it's a lot of fun to do. That would be amazing. Yeah, it's it, it's nice. I, I want to get my community involved, right? You know, my Discord has grown. Uh, a whole bunch of people just from D&D. Maybe, yeah, the, um, what's it called? Uh, West Marches, I think. Or Iron Marches? The one where it's, you have one world and you have large group of large groups of adventurers and stuff like that. I mean, I know, I, I think a lot of those are ran by different DMs as well. And I, I'm in contact with several DMs, but we'll just have to see, you know, if D&D uh, &D continues to be good to my channel, I don't see why not to, to keep working on it and keep having fun. Also, it gets, you know, my um, creative juices kind of flowing a lot because I haven't done creative write writing in, in years at this point. You know, I'm a graphic designer by nature. Um, so I've, I'm always creative, but creative writing is, is um, a mixed bag for me. So my voice is like starting to give out at this point. <laughs> So, um, I think for the best, I will, um, where is my binding screen? So I think I will, you know, my voice is starting to give out just a little bit and, um, I've had a lot of fun, that's for sure. But, uh, I don't think I can, I, I can't go on much longer, <laughs> but I will be, um, you know, I'll be back. I might as well come back tomorrow, right? Maybe put down some more stuff on this i on the idea page, and um, work on something else later tomorrow. Maybe around the same time. Maybe not. I don't know. <laughs> See you around. Thank you all for showing up. And um, you know, uh, again, I do stream my D and D sessions themselves on Saturdays. So if anyone is kind of interested at that, it would. It's much later in the day. It's um, six p.m. CST, and you can kind of. I'm not the best DM, that's for sure. But uh, I never said I was. You know, it's one of those things. Uh, so if you want to stop by for that, if you want to, you can also check out my Discord where you can. Hopefully this command still works. Yes, it does. You can join my Discord, and um, this kind of stuff will be up soon enough for you to um, see and read as things expand, and you can kind of meet my players, and, um, you know, you can talk to me more about D&D &D stuff uh, when I'm not streaming as well. Uh, I talk about it quite a lot, and I, you know, you got your standard, your memes, and all that stuff. <laughs> and I do highlight other uh, content creators on my on my Discord as well uh, for anyone else that streams. But uh, so yeah, I would like to uh, you know thank you all for for coming and um, catch you guys next time. See you around. Bye.